Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Guess what car we have today? You probably saw the thumbnail, so you know what I'm going to say. It's the Honda Elevate. Now guys, this is a very, very good welcome addition to the Honda lineup. And if you remember, Honda did have a car in this category, which was a WRV. And luckily, the Elevate has come at the right time because guys, the WRV was not good, especially because of the 1.2 liter engine. But I'm happy to tell you that this Honda Elevate, there's so much to talk about. There are two or three cons about the car quite big drawbacks but there are much more pros and much more benefits of this car and guys i promise you this is going to be worth listening to because this is the car you've actually been waiting for if you are honda fans then you're really really going to be happy about this so guys stay with me in this video stick with me listen to the benefits and the disadvantages of this car and then make your decision and guys let me know in the comments below i'd love to hear what your thoughts are on the honda elevate so guys let's go so guys you know on this channel i don't like beating around the bush let's get straight to it the price now guys this market i mean this segment the compact suv segment is ex exceptionally highly contended now to to get a car or to bring a car in this market that is very good quality good build quality a good drive good features all around and bringing it in at the right price and let me add good fuel efficiency is very difficult and i'm happy to tell you guys honda got this right and there are so many reasons why you need to hear about this there are two variants in this range in this honda elevate one is the comfort and number two is the elegance now what i'm driving today is the elegance at the top of the range now the comfort you can you can get into the comfort of the honda elevate for 370,000 yes guys you heard me correctly for under 400,000 you can get this absolutely amazing car by Honda for just 370,000 the elegance that I'm in now is 430,000 now guys for the top of the range at 430,000 in this compact SUV segment it's absolutely amazing now guys before you get very excited please you need to hear what features are you getting at this price and believe me guys it's a lot of features let me go through them so in terms of power and kilowatts now they both are the same you're getting 89 kilowatts and 145 newton meters of now, torque fuel efficiency i will get into later and i was very very surprised at the fuel efficiency of this car now there's something i mean i have to mention which is one of the drawbacks of this car is that this so the elegance i'm in now it's a cvt now you don't get the elegance in a manual unfortunately and the comfort only comes in manual so if you are going to take the comfort you have no option but to take a manual and if you are taking the elegance you have no option but to take the cvt now i will get into how the drive is of the cvt a bit later in the video so stick around for and that let me get into some of the differences between these two comfort and elegance so you can decide now just remember the elegance does cost you sixty thousand and more so 370 for comfort 430 for elegance so keep that in your mind as you're listening to this now one big difference between the two variants obviously is the transmission that i've spoke about but also the airbags in the comfort you're only getting two airbags whereas in the elegance that i'm driving at the moment and i'm reviewing for you guys you're getting six airbags so that already is a big difference fuel efficiency now i'll tell you what the claimed fuel efficiency is i'll tell you what i actually got so claimed fuel efficiency for manual the comfort is 6.7 liters and the claimed fuel efficiency for the elegance which i'm driving today is 6.1 liters now bear in mind comfort is at manual and the elegance is at cv is a cvt so honda is is saying that the cvt is more fuel efficient and i haven't tried the manual but i can definitely tell you that this car is fuel efficient wait for it guys i will tell you about it don't worry both of them have 40 liter fuel tank so you're looking at let's work this out together so if you're averaging about six liters per 100 kilometers on a full tank you'll get about between 600 and 700 probably not 700 but more towards a 600 kilometer mark and that is quite decent and obviously if you are doing more long road then you would get that kind of range that i've talked about but if you're getting a bad fuel efficiency of 10 liters per 100 you're looking at 400 kilometers on the tank that's okay it's not it's nothing to rave about but it's not too terrible another difference another great advantage of the elegance model is the led lights you get led lights and you get led fog lights those look absolutely amazing and are really really great to have and you also get automatic headlights now that is very very nice because you do not want to be in a situation where you forget your headlights on because then you're gonna have to charge your battery and that we know is not a pretty situation if you have been in that situation recently if you have a car that does not have auto lights please comment below and let me know if that's happened to you 
it's actually happened to me recently so that's why I spoke about it because yeah personal experience always teaches you the best another great feature now the elegance and the comfort have this is smart keyless entry so once you get the keys from the drawer or from wherever you keep your keys at home put it in your pocket and you won't have to touch it again because as soon as you go to the car it will open automatically you put your hand by the handle the car opens and you are sorted you can get into the car and press push to start and you can start and also when you exit the car you don't have to worry to take the keys out of your pocket and lock it as you exit the car and walk the car locks automatically which is great other features you're going to get is uh, you get a reverse camera which is nice you get two usb ports in the front usb works absolutely perfectly you get android auto and apple carplay i haven't tested those out but you do get it a very very big disadvantage in this car is not the sunroof you do get the sunroof it's manual not cvt or automatic but guys a big drawback and one of the first things i noticed when i entered the car i looked at the steering wheel you get nice buttons on the left you can increase your volume decrease your volume home button you know go through all the features of this car but i looked on the right and i saw whoa 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 there's nothing here and you know what that means guys there is no cruise control in this car now guys if you did not know that i'm sure you must be saying oh man or ish or whatever word you use to express your disappointment I was also very disappointed that you know that there was no cruise control cruise control would have just been so nice in this car it would have been the cherry on the top because guys i'm going to tell you about another exceptional feature now this is a compact suv now one of the closest comp if you look at all the competitors you you could think of the hyundai creta the toyota urban cruiser the you know suzuki vitara brezza but let me tell you because of the size and and the segment that this is in the most the closest car that you're going to get is a suzuki grand vitara now that car drives well it is good but i have driven the the suzuki grand vitara you can check it out on my channel and the new toyota urban cruiser now i have a good idea of those cars but this one here in terms of comfort the leather seats is much more comfortable okay wait before i carry on the elegance has leather and the comfort has cloth so that's another difference right the leather seats are very very comfortable and this car has a much more comfortable drive you can definitely feel how solid this honda is on the road it is solid on the road because i can feel that the car is a bit on the heavy side so which means you feel planted on the ground when you're driving so you, you feel like you have a lot of control but it's a bit heavy on the turn so if you are taking your corners try to reduce your speed a bit because it, it it's not as you know as dynamic and as uh, springy as sporty as you know some other cars but you know it's a, it's a it's a pro and a con being heavy on the road but i think it's more of a pro than a con to to have you know a comfortable and a strong drive okay now guys one of my favorite features of this car is the boot if you're a family and if you want to go on road trips if you want a car in this compact suv segment that you want to be able to you know take the kids to school and be comfortable in your day-to-day -day driving then guys this is it because besides all the amazing features i've told you i mean that's already enough to make you want to buy this car but after you hear this you're really going to be astounded with how good it is now remember i told you the closest competitor is what's that yeah that's right suzuki grand vitara now if you have been looking at that car do you know what size boot the grand vitara has if i remember correctly it has 310 meters or maybe 328 or 330 let's say 350 at most right that's the boot that the Grand Vitara has. Now, this Honda Elevate, yes, the boot is elevated besides lots of other aspects of this car. It has, wait for it guys, drum roll, I don't know if there is any drums to roll, but 458 liters of boot space. Guys, sure, previously when I told you there's no cruise control, you said, oh no. But now when I told you there's a 458 liter boot, now it's, your reaction is the total opposite. You probably, very very excited and rightfully so you should be because 458 liters boot sure it's a five seater but guys i mean you can't fit in people there right so don't do it though don't fit in any people but that is the boot and you know overall this honda elevate really the name speaks for itself honda has really elevated themselves if now guys are you thinking that i'm going to be ending this video now without telling you about the fuel efficiency you are wrong guys i remembered so if you are if you not worried about fuel efficiency at all and if you're just driving this car like you want to get like you're in a hurry all the time wherever you're going to 
then you will be averaging between 9 and 10 liters but if you drive this car like a normal human right conscious of fuel efficiency driving past the petrol stations and reminding yourself what the petrol price is if you're ever driving fast slow down next to a petrol garage and look at the fuel price i'm sure that's going to make you press brakes immediately right or drive more fuel efficient now i took this car on the n1 for quite a long stretch and my average fuel consumption was wait for it guys it wasn't six liters it wasn't 5.9 it wasn't even 5.5 it was average of 5.4 liters per hundred now guys that can tell you if you are taking this car on a road trip and believe me it is very very well suited for a road trip and 5.4 liters per hundred you definitely will get there not in just in one piece but we'll get there in one fuel tank now isn't that amazing mm -hmm. the spaciousness at the back now now remember a car that's very spacious and a car that's very big and made with so much luxury and with a great drive you would think that it has a smaller boot and is less fuel efficient but guys honda has not done that good headroom good knee room good space at the back they kept passengers in mind and they made the boot big and the car is fuel efficient guys i'm sure you can forgive honda for excluding cruise control in this car and maybe for putting the cvt engine i know there's a lot of contention a lot of apprehension about a cvt engine but i'm sure that you can forgive honda for that and it's much better than a lot of other CVT engines that I have driven, or CVT transmissions rather. And one more thing before this video comes to an end. The 1.5 liter naturally aspirated can be a little bit on the sluggish side. Now bear in mind the car is heavy, it's got a lot of uh, things going for it. But one thing it doesn't have going for it is speed. So if you're considering buying this car for yourself, then just keep in mind that you'll have to be a bit more cautious on the road when you are overtaking it's it's not the fastest car that's why it is also very fuel efficient because the 1.5 liter naturally aspirated is not super fast that you're not going to enjoy the drive you will enjoy the drive you'll enjoy the comfort you'll enjoy so many things about this nice. car that is my take on the honda elevate are you happy with it are you happy with what i've covered in this video are you happy that honda has come into the segment very very hard and very competitively priced and with a very very good product guys as always if you enjoyed this video please give it a like you can give it two likes i'm not sure if you can do that but like the video subscribe to the channel and i know guys i always ask you to share it but i know deep down you know someone that is in the compact suv segment i mean everyone i speak to they're asking me about compact suvs so i'm sure if you're watching this video you know someone that wants a car like this and guys you heard all the features on this honda elevate you probably can't wait to share it with someone but guys let me tell you share this with at least three people have a look at the other videos on the channel i'm sure you'll enjoy some of the other ones there are some really interesting ones we are approaching 200 videos on this channel so if this is your first time watching have a look at some of the other videos i'm sure you'll find something you like thanks for watching guys